Missouri River, near Bismarck, North Dakota. Flowing from the Rocky Mountains, the Missouri River travels 2,341 miles and feeds into the Mississippi River near St. Louis. Along the way, it is the provider of clean, fresh water for millions of plants, animals, and people. Standing Rock Native American Reservation can be found about 45 miles south of Bismarck, North Dakota. Normally home to the Hunkpapa Lakota and Yanktonai Dakota groups, there are currently dozens of other Native American groups residing there, along with hundreds of non-Native people from all over the world. Why are thousands of people staying at a Native American reservation in the middle of the Dakotas? It is to protect the water from the Dakota Access Oil Pipeline. Construction of this pipeline began in early 2016. Originally scheduled to traverse the state capital, the Army Corps of Engineers decided to have the pipeline moved away from the city due to concerns of leakage into the city's drinking water sources. Dakota Access rerouted construction to pass one half mile north of Standing Rock. The people of Standing Rock were concerned that the pipeline, which is planned to pass under the Missouri River, will eventually leak, contaminating the drinking water for so much life downstream. Due to both the spread of misinformation and the complete failure of the mainstream media to sufficiently cover the events at Standing Rock, far too many people are under the impression that these protesters are violent. The media says that we're rioting. And if you look around, you see teepees with, with love written all over them. You see people, everyone you walk by has a smile on their face and says, hello, how are you? You see, you feel, not even see, you feel the genuine feelings. And, but the media has not portrayed it that way. And you know that this is uh, such a hot topic issue and it should have a lot more attention. And I think that it's not everyone's fault. I think that a lot of it has to do with media's ignoring all of what's happening here or like misconstruing it. Hi, my name is Patricia Stiles. I'm from Bellingham, Washington. Um, this is my daughter, Sunny. My husband's Ryan Stiles, of uh, Whose Line Is It Anyways? Drew Carey Show. I started following what was going on Facebook at the end of August. What's happened to me at first, it was watching this not being televised, not getting out to the public. You know, the major news outlets are not really uh, covering a lot of the stuff that's happening around here, but if you do go on Facebook, that's been a big, you know, help with getting people aware of what's happening here at Standing Rock. A lot of my friends and family, uh, a lot of them support me, but they all have some sort of fear in them. You know, they, they're all listening to the media, and it's not always the best sources where this comes from. That's what, exactly why I came here, is because I'm hearing so many views about this, I want to see it for myself. On the contrary, the protesters are incredibly strict when it comes to how they protest. My name's Joe Williams. I'm a Wiradjuri First Nations man from Australia. Now a lot of people are calling it, and especially the government are calling it a protest, but from what I've learned off the people on the ground that makes so much sense is that we're not water protesters, we're water protectors. Um, you know, Mother Earth is, is something that's extremely sacred to us. There is a strict no drug and no weapon policy at the camps, and training is given to newcomers daily on how to protest peacefully. Most frontline movements are peaceful prayer or silent marches. Anyone who spends 15 seconds in the camps will immediately see that it is a place of peace. I think this is a great way to show many people that are actually clicked into this that we're not ignorant, we're not self-destructive, we want to live peacefully, we want to have access to clean water, because that's, that's everyone's right, and, and that's, that's what we're all here for today. A lot of my family doesn't know because I, feel, I felt like they wouldn't necessarily understand what was going on. I feel like they're a little bit misinformed, or they just have lack of information, and so I think a lot of my family thinks that it was going to be dangerous to come up here, even though this entire organization, like all of these organized events, are taking a stance of nonviolence. So I think that that's kind of ironic that it's being perpetuated as this kind of dangerous environment. The people here have been amazing. I haven't met a single unkind person. They're always looking out for each other, making sure everyone has what they need, that they're warm, that they're fed, that their emotional needs are taken care of, that we're all healthy. 
it spreads all across the camp. If one person cares, it makes another person care. I have never felt more like I belong somewhere. Like I am, I know I'm in the right place. I have never met more peaceful and loving people in my life, never. And even strangers, I've never felt more loved by strangers before or safe. Despite the obvious lack of violence from the water protectors, the police have retaliated with force normally reserved to combat violent militias. The abuse from authorities started in early September when a private security force used dogs to attack the protectors. Several natives were injured at this time. My name is Tashina Sapoli, that means Black Shawl and Lakota. I am from the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation and I am of the Hunkpapa, Itajisho, and Minikoju band. When I got bit by, a by the dog, September 3rd, Dapple's security cards, um, the tribe was shocked. The tribe the whole time supported me in what I did and even got in contact with my chairman of my tribe of Cheyenne River and did anything that was just wood or water or anything at all, they helped. And it wasn't just me that they were helping, they were helping all of us who are frontliners. You know, frontliners, we go there, no just more than, nothing more than what I have on right now. And our lives are threatened. I started following what was going on Facebook at the end of August. And I was just completely outraged. I couldn't believe what was happening. I saw, you know, a young girl being attacked by a dog, a pregnant woman being bit. It, it just rattled me to my bones. The brutality that the officers and Dapo security has been, you know, inflicting upon the uh, this prayerful and peaceful, you know, march here movement, um, you know, it's been happening to this Native Americans for 500 years, so it's about time for a change, people. My name is Rana Lapine, and I'm from New York City. I'm disgusted with the response to this. I think the local government has had a horrendous response. There have been all sorts of human rights violations. They are putting people in dog kennels, um, just treating people inhumanely. And I think the federal government has been far too slow. I'm really worried about what will happen come January. And I think that there needs to be a response now because there's been a request from the Army Corps of Engineers to stop building and they're still building. They're still digging every night. We see them. So there needs to be more. In the following weeks, the local and state police joined the private DAPL security and began using massive amounts of mace on frontline protectors, even when the protectors were on native territory. I think it's absolutely disgusting um, that the people and uh, the people who are who are in charge of this this pipeline it's it's all about money, greed, and power. Um, you know, the, they don't care about the native people on the ground and and our our rights and and our our beliefs, our our traditional beliefs in refer in reference to their land. Um, they only care about money and and power, as I mentioned. The people of the state of North Dakota are the generally generally wonderful people, law-abiding, non-violent people, and they're trying to go about their lives. This has been such a disruption to that state. This is not a peaceful protest, so if they want to stick around and, and continue to do what they're doing, great, but we're building the pipeline. Even with the threats and acts of violence by officials and DAPL security, people are arriving every day to aid this cause and lend a hand in any way they can. My name is Jeanette Alfaro and I'm from Denver, Colorado. Uh, I only told my mother yesterday I was uh, on my way through Wyoming. <laughs> but it was just nice to jump into the kitchen and be able to help out and just have people direct you and tell you, yes, this is exactly what we need, so go ahead and jump in and like do the best you can. So I'm out here with my brothers and sisters and I'm doing my best. Uh, you know, I'm not on the front lines. My job isn't to be on the front lines. My job is to support and do the best I can behind the scenes to make sure that everybody's well looked after and, and helped. But here everybody kind of intermingles and camps alongside each other and helps each other out. So that's a beautiful thing about here. So the people have received uh, me very well here since I've been here since August and just doing my best to, to uh, repay that, that gratitude. Everybody is here to help everybody and I am completely taken away by just, it's kind of like you, what you find at a church. It's a community. Everybody brings in what they know, their knowledge, what they have, and they put it together and they build this amazing, just amazing town. And I am, I'm just, I'm amazed. <laughs> the fire that burns within us all and the spirit that keeps guiding us, 
that's what keeps me here. It's unexplainable, it's, you can't describe it. Because once you get here, get about 10 minutes on the front line, you'll never wanna leave. Because we're fighting for not just indigenous rights of our people, we're fighting for all human rights. We're fighting for the bigger picture, to be able to live as human beings and not have to fight so damn hard to live. For basic human rights, water, food, the land, life. Kelsey Warren, CEO of Energy Transfer Partners, insists the pipeline will be built. This is despite President Obama's and the Army Corps of Engineers' requests to pause construction while this situation is adjudicated. You think all the protesters are going to go away once you're done? Absolutely. What is there to protest? They are determined to stop your project. They will not stop our project. That's naive. You're, they're not stopping our project. This movement is about more than just Standing Rock. People's constitutional rights are being violated. Laws and treaties are being broken. Peaceful citizens are being harmed by a militarized police force. A fossil fuel corporation is knowingly putting a major freshwater source at risk. If we as American citizens don't stand up for what is right here, where will they stop? My name is Dennis and I'm from Sweden. The water in this fight doesn't stop here. This stand is, is, may take place here in the U.S., right here at Standing Rock, but it doesn't stop here because the water that runs in our streams back home in Sweden, that we fish our fish from, that, that we drink from, it's the same water. It's the same water all over the planet. This is not just one nation's fight or one tribe's fight. This, this concerns all of us. Because this movement is much more than just about a pipeline. This movement is about unity and becoming aware and, and saving the water. I mean, we've had the same water since the beginning of time. This isn't just the native issue. You know, this is, this is a humanitarian issue. It's a crisis. We need everybody to get behind it. My name is Johanna Eagleroad and I am from Denmark. I am here today to support these people and to send out a message to the world. I feel that this is a, this is a global wake-up call to, uh, to raise awareness of how we treat our planet and how we can look after our waters. This fight right now that we're doing is only the beginning. We have a lot more ahead of us, especially in this upcoming presidential Term. I'm here because in our state of Minnesota, we've had to deal with pipeline issues and now we're facing copper nickel mines which take 500 years minimum to recover and there's never been a successful sulfide mine anywhere in the world. This is actually kind of setting the foundation for us to be able to protect our water not only here in North Dakota but throughout our nation. I think this is a really historic moment um, in American history because this isn't just about the Sioux Indian Reservation, um, it's about protecting the water um, it's about protecting the rivers, which, you know, all of the rivers in this continent are interconnected in some way, and if we uh, allow the powers that be or big corporations to contaminate one, I mean, where does it stop? And this isn't about different political parties or different peoples or different backgrounds. It's about protecting what is most sacred and about protecting life. You know, this doesn't just this doesn't just cover like one of the political parties. You know, this is this is both political parties that, you know, in all of their, like fundamentally against what they both stand for. And they should both be showing solidarity in this issue. So what can you do to help? You can start by raising awareness with your friends, families, and communities about what is really going on at Standing Rock. Misinformation and fear has no place when human rights are on the line. My friends and family think um, this is a joke. Um, they don't support me. Um, for the last week before I came, I heard several times a day, every day, that I was going to get arrested. I was not going to be able to come back to Canada. And I was defeating my freedom. I, I was doing something that wasn't important. My family does not understand the importance of this issue and why we, me and my friend, feel this drive to be here. If you want to know what's really happening here, you need to ask people, talk to people, get the conversation going locally, you know? So it's about awareness, it's about bringing awareness to this, and the only reason why there aren't thousands and thousands of people here is because people don't know. But when people start to catch wind of what's going on here, 
that's what gives you the drive to come. That's what's making people want to come. I think the coolest part about being here is that everybody really wants you to get involved. Like everybody really is really open about what events are happening and they really want you to step up and participate um, and witness what's going on around them because I think that's the most important part about getting the word out here. I don't think my family really cares and friends and family, I don't think they understand the gravity of the issue. I just think everybody should come down here and experience this and bring, bring whatever they know and, or whatever they don't know and they'll learn and I just think this is the place to be in the whole world. I think this right now here is the place to be. I would like to tell people that you have to be careful with the sorts of things that are going on. Uh, if you don't take a stand for something starting like this here at Standing Rock, then before you know it, your own water supplies could be polluted. And I would want to make sure that they know that the people fighting here today are not just fighting for the Lakota, not just fighting for natives, but are fighting for their drinking water too, including the people who are even building the pipeline, right? Natives are fighting for them to have clean water as well. We need everybody to get behind it. You know, the, share the things on Facebook. Come out here. Don't just talk about it. Don't just hashtag water is life. Get out here. See how much it means to the people. See how much it means to the animals. Animals drink this water. We eat the animals. It's a circle of life. Everybody can be part of the participation out here. It's just how much do you want to be part of that? Everyone is welcomed here, and it, it, you don't have to be Native. We eat together, we pray together, we talk together, and as I was told when I first came, we start out as strangers, but we become family. We're human, man. We're not robots. Love you guys back home in Hawaii. And once people start getting away from the concept of money and oil and fossil fuels, they'll start understanding that connection, I believe. Because to me, pay money, no amount of money will excuse the life of two million people downstream. 20 million, I'm sorry, 20 million people downstream of the Missouri River. Um, this is our home, this is our life. When I got back on Highway 6, my t I noticed my tire it just burst on my camper. And the only house nearby, um, I, I went and knocked on the door, and the guy came out and he drove up behind me and he was gonna help me, and then he asked if I was headed towards the protest, and I said yes, and he looked at me and said, I'm sorry, then I can't help you, and then he drove away, and my heart literally sank. Anyways, he came back, and he must have felt bad, and um, he helped me, and he continued to tell me to go home, and continued to tell me you know, I don't know why you guys can't find anything better to do. And that conversation really just opened my heart to, to realize that it's, this is exactly what I want to do. This is exactly why I'm here is because there are people like that in the world that can't, that don't understand. I was on my way again and I got here. When we went on our march in Mandan, actually it was a forgiveness march. And as we are crossing the street, this guy who helped me, was the first person in the line that was being stopped by the police as we all crossed in front of him and he noticed me and he he smiled and I just I looked at him with I, I just had so much joy and I just said thank you so much for helping me and God bless and he looked right back at me and he said God bless and waved and just seemed seemed like he had some sort of peace in him he didn't have any anger like he did when I first met him who knows Maybe you'll educate someone, change their mind, and make a difference.